Revisiting this one more time, I forgot one thing in that uh, previous video. And we have the choice for IPv6 for auto configuration, yes or no. And uh, both ways will work, but I'm gonna have us go to no auto configuration and we'll do static configuration. When you do that and you apply that, you can see I've got my, my IPv6 address here. Let's go save that and watch what happens. Right, it cleans it up quite a bit, and that'll match the the snapshot, uh, the, or the yeah the uh, sample sample screen capture that I have for you. Okay, so by disabling auto configuration, and it's still using our FE80, which is like a link local, and that's great. We'll leave that alone. But it has also it has uh, making the choice between auto configure yes or no affects other settings over here in the TCP/IP stacks. Let's go look at those. Okay, TCIP stacks, edit, edit settings. If we, if we leave it auto configuration, then you won't be able to set this value. It'll go to an FE80 value and that does work. That does work. And it's, it's um, are, you could argue to whether to use that or to not use that to try to help us to, to visualize how the packets move back and forth. For IPv4 and IPv6, I'm asking that that we turn off auto configuration and then therefore we'll put the value in here. And then I, I hope that this will help you understand how IPv6 traffic gets in and out of your network. Okay, so this is the other half of setting uh, TCP IP up on, on ESXi. Let me go back and, and be sure that you got that. So we were over here in networking. We were here and we were working with the VM kernel NIC, we were editing settings, and that's where we did everything up to this point. Now we go over here to the TCP IP stacks, and we come down to the default TCP IP stacks, and we go to edit settings. And this is where we get to set the additional things, our host name, domain name, primary DNS server, secondary DNS server, Okay, secondary DNS server uh, is the IPv6 address for that same server ending in dot .230. That's a server called server one here in, uh, in lab A. Gateway values are there. And just a reminder, if you're not able to change this or if you change it and you save, uh, you come in here, it's an FE80 value. You put in your, your specific 2620 value. You save it and you come back and it's back to FE80. It's because you have auto configuration still enabled. Go ahead and click save. Okay, so that, that's it for this side of it. Now, the other thing that I wanna show you is I mentioned earlier that there are two ways to do this. You can do this from the graphical web interface or you can also do this from the console interface. So this is, this is nested ESXi here. I've got uh, VMware 3 as a server physical server here inside and inside of VM3, I've got another VM running for demonstration purposes, ESXi 19, and you can see with the console here, this is what the VMware console looks like. I'm gonna pause the video and get this set up to display a little bit better, and then I wanna show you how you can set the, the IP values, DNS, host name, and so on from the console. Okay, if you were able to physically be at your ESXi server, this is what it looks like when it's um, when you're at it and you've touched the keyboard. It, it'll go dark, it'll time out here, and it'll go to a kind of a, a dim screen with the same information, but you won't see any yellow or anything. So I press the keyboard and it wakes it up or takes it out of kind of the screensaver mode. And notice down here at the bottom that I've got two options. I've got an F2 and I've got an F12. I'll show you those here, okay. F2 and F12. F2 then allows us to go in and to, to do customized settings for IPv4 from the console. It allows us to open an SSH session. It allows you quite a bit. Like when, when things go wrong in the graphical side of, of working on your server, then to come here is, is like plan B. And there, there you go, there you see the screensaver. 
and you can then go in and, and you can do quite a bit. You can do quite a bit of troubleshooting and recovery. The F12 option is if you want to shut it down. Let's see if I can wake it back up here. There we go. So F12 then, if you hit F12, you'll, in either case, hitting F2 or F12, let's just go ahead and do it. It asks you to authenticate. Okay, so I hit F2, and then you can see here, I don't have mouse movement in it, but you can see here all the different choices. Change the password, configure the management console. You can come in here and, and you can actually pick which network card you want for your management network card. There's uh, all kinds of stuff here, and I just wanted you to see this because you're not able to physically be at your server. I wanted you to, to see this option. So here's where you'd go in and set your IPv4 settings. The default is this choice right here, DHCP. And then what you come do down is you, you, you come down and you highlight, highlight static and you press the space bar. Then you can come down here and enter your values. And then it, it's escaped to back out of it. Same thing with IPv6. The default is DHCP. You can come down here and enter your values. And then hit escape. And we just work our way down the list. The DNS servers, same and then DNS suffix. Okay. Before I leave this, let me just show you a couple other things that are here. Restart the management network. Testing, it'll go out and just give you a quick look at this. You, it'll do a ping kind of a thing and test all these to verify that they're working and it'll report back to you whether they are or not. The troubleshooting one is, is often very helpful where you can come in here and you can enable SSH. It's like I already have it enabled. Okay, enable, disable SSH. And what you can then do is you can, even though you can't graphically get into your server through the, the web console, if you enable SSH here, you can SSH in and, and like replace a, a failed certificate or go into a data store. There's, yeah, it's pretty helpful. Okay, all right. If you want to start over, just you, you don't want to lose your installation, but you want to reset everything back to to post installation, then you can reset system configuration here and it'll take you back to, to the very beginning. It won't remove your data stores and it won't remove any virtual machines, but it will reset the networking and uh, user accounts and resets most of the stuff that we went in and configured, um, but preserves as much as it can. Okay. All right, so let me wrap up this video and uh, we'll continue on.